Hello, Bill Johnson here with Johnson Aviation with another maintenance moment. Here's the panel for our Cessna 180. I've gotten the instruments mounted, the two G5s and the JPI 930 and the steam gauges. So I do need to plumb the back side of the panel here, the pitot and the static. I still need to do that. And then the G5s do require you to have a pitot static test set and run them up to altitude to make sure they're calibrated properly, so I need to do that as well. But the panel, other than that, the panel's about ready to go in the plane. The harness has been put in the plane. The first thing we did though was to mount the GMU-11 on the wingtip. I'm gonna show that to you since I had a request in the comments to do that. So we uh, mount the GMU-11 out here on the wingtip with a bracket that uh, we fabbed up real quick. You can see it's just a simple bracket and you want to get it level with the top of the door, door seal since that's the level point on this plane. So it simply bolts to the wingtip. And we also run new wire for the nav light. Now we twisted this wire. Ordinarily the ground would go here, but to minimize interference with the GMU-11, you need to run twisted wire all the way back to the instrument panel. That cancels out the electromagnetic fields. And I have another video that shows you how to twist that wire, and I will add it onto this video at the end. So that's the GMU-11. Those wires have all run back to the airframe here. So the harness is in there. You can see the connectors for the G5 head tube and the G5 HSI. A couple of things to note on the G5 is they require you to have bonding straps from the shell to the airframe, in addition to the grounds that go back for power. The other thing on the G5s is the power lines require diodes. So you need to notice those items when you install the G5s. You need diodes in the power line and these grounding straps. Also, you'll notice that these components, some of them connect together, like the GAD29 and the GAD13 are supposed to be on the same breaker. The HSI G5 and the GMU11 go on the same breaker. And then the Attitude G5 is on its own breaker. So those are a couple of little items to know about the G5. The GMU11 also needs a grounding strap, if you noticed that on the video previously. We have the JPI harness hanging there. So it won't be long before we put the panel in, connect up all the connectors and, and test that out. Still quite a bit of work to do up here on the engine, but a little bit each night and before long, we will have it going. So I am now going to put the video behind this one that shows how to twist those wires for the, for the nav light. By the way, you can see that twisted pair of wire coming down on the inside there to the panel. And I'm also going to show you the tool we used to put to be able to feed that wire through the wing. And actually, I'll show that to you right now. These fiberglass wire kit, they screw together and that's real handy to run wires through wings or through the tail or wherever you need to go. Came from Harbor Freight. Now I bought this some time ago. Here's the item number, 65326. Hopefully they still have those, but those are very handy to have when you're trying to run wires through a wing and you can't get your arm in there. Okay, thanks for watching and have a great day. Hello folks, Bill Johnson here with Johnson Aviation with another maintenance moment. Clay, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Clay Travis, the uh, local apprentice of Mr. Bill Johnson. And helper, and all around good guy. <laughs> okay, you can see that Clay and I have laid out the wire, 16 gauge wire in this case. It's the length of the wing and then some, since we need to take this wire all the way back into the fuselage. We are going to use a drill here and twist it. The theory being that 
the current creates an electromagnetic field and you bring the ground wire and the power wire, you twist them and the fields cancel each other out. So I'm gonna to try to do this while videoing. We may very well mess it up, but here we go. So you take the drill and start twisting. And I don't know how many twist prints they say to have. I just kind of do it till I feel it's good enough. Let's see what we got there. Now the key is, when you start twisting, do not take the tension off the wire until you are done. And you have to let it uncoil backwards a little bit. Otherwise, it'll turn into a big ball of wire on your floor. And got a little more. Okay, I can feel it pulling in now. That's getting better. Just a little more. All right, let's see what that looks like. Maybe a little more. Okay, I think that is pretty good. It's going to unwind a little bit. Now... I'm going to, somehow, we need to carefully let this unwind itself. To take some of the tension off it. Okay, put it in your hand, Clay, and then just let it rotate without it coming out of your hand. Until it, I don't know if you can see that wire moving, but has it stopped rotating? Yeah. Okay, now, you can see if we just lay it on the floor, it'll stay in a straight piece of wire. If we had not done that, it would have coiled up and have been a complete mess.